with uh, three little ones at home, um, all under five, I, you can imagine that I don't have a lot of uh, free time for recreational reading. Um, basically, if it's not um, you know Snow White or one of those fairy tales, I just uh, don't have a chance to read it. So I find that I do most of my recreational reading at work when I should be designing websites. Uh, but actually, kidding aside, I don't even have a chance to do uh, too much reading there. It seems like the only chance I get to do any kind of recreational reading would be the checkout line at the grocery store. And it was through uh, one of these experiences that I had an epiphany that kind of relates to our conversation today. And if you think about the uh, checkout line, we're inundated and surrounded by tabloids that are trying to uh, gain our attention and our readership and hopefully our, our money. And as you're looking at these four different publications, different publishers, um, different periodicals, do you notice a pattern, some consistency in their design, maybe some similar information architecture, uh, very similar wireframe page layout or composition? So it seems like the tabloid folks have uh, struck upon a formula for success. And this actually is an arithmetic formula. It's a geometric uh, uh, formula that we're going to look at in a few minutes. But if you notice, uh, any of these uh, cover stories are basically divided into thirds. And there's going to be a predominant image on two thirds of the page. And then the right-hand column, the remaining third, that's also divided into three. That's going to be a theme that not only do we see with these publications, these cover stories, but it's going to be uh, some, now that you've noticed that similarity, it might be something that you notice on home pages as well. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. I thought that might be a, a more entertaining way to start off uh, the presentation, particularly since my first slide was entitled Information Architecture. That's such a, a fun word to say, and it's a great word to toss around. Uh, and I just thought we'd, we'd uh, take some of the mystery out of it, if there is any mystery, or if anyone has any question what that actually means. This uh, definition actually comes to us from the Information Architecture Institute. And it says that information architecture is the art and science simply of organizing and labeling websites to support findability and usability. So breaking that down into some uh, more uh, layman terms, essentially it just means that as we're designing our websites, we want to have intuitive navigation and very clear content labels. And if we do that in our web design efforts, then we have achieved a good information architecture. And you know, taking a closer look or another examination of your existing website, this is a very uh, target-rich area in which you can make some pretty dramatic improvements on your site today without going through some extensive redesign effort. But if you are going through a redesign effort, then taking uh, you know, careful steps at this stage is absolutely crucial because it's going to mean the difference between a successful design and a successful uh, user experience and, and one that ultimately uh, is frustrating and may, may uh, end in failure. This next slide illustrates a sample information architecture diagram um, if you're unfamiliar with this, it's, it's very easily uh, digested. At the top of the diagram, you would uh, traditionally find the name of the website, and then each one of these branches is showing the, the hierarchical relationship of components or content pieces that are on the site. Um, many people make the direct correlation between uh, an, an IA diagram and the site navigation. And while generally that tends to be the case, uh, it's, not a, it's not a necessary and, and implicit one-to-one -one relationship. Essentially what we're trying to do is that that term uh, hierarchical relationship is fairly important when it comes to IA diagrams. You're, you're wanting to place the most more important things up to the top. Uh, what we're looking at here is a simple uh, two-level navigation where everything in this top row would essentially be uh, the primary navigation and then everything below each one of those uh, first row boxes would be the supporting or secondary navigation below that area. If you, you find yourselves having difficulty uh, devising the IA diagram, 
Um, there's an exercise called the card sorting exercise that tries to make really easy work of that. And it's something that I would recommend um, whether you're, uh, even for existing sites, if you're not looking at a complete redesign, it's a very helpful exercise to make sure that you're meeting your members' needs and the public's needs, that they're able to find what they need to on the site. Uh, particularly if you are working with a, a, a site that's been in production for a number of years, uh, everyone on staff, especially you as, as caretakers of your association's website, you know how to find everything. But it's amazing if you've ever um, you know, looked at your web analytics, uh, your web logs, to see just how little time people actually spend on the site. I mean, people are literally landing just for a few seconds on your homepage, and if they don't, uh, if they're not able to digest and what they're seeing and to find some value there, they're not going to dig any deeper. Um, and I'm sure uh, membership departments are tired of getting calls of, I can't find this or, or that as they're looking through this site. So uh, a card sorting exercise might be something that you would find a lot of benefit from, even if you're not planning you know, an extensive, uh, complete redesign at this point. The premise between the card sorting exercises is really very simple. You look at each of the content areas on your site and put uh, literally that, the name of that content area on an index card. You would collect all those index cards together and then uh, give them to a group of volunteers. Uh, ideally, it's people who are not on staff that already know the website. These are folks that might be uh, new members to the organization or maybe they've left and they're returning. It's folks that aren't already familiar and know all the ins and outs of the existing structure. Because what we're trying to do is find people that are engaged in, in your mission but are not already intimately familiar with your website. And these folks uh, can be you know, scattered about the country. This isn't like a collective group effort where we're all working together. These folks can do this independently. In fact, that, that's when it works best. You would just give a set of index cards to each person, each volunteer within that group, and ask them to sort the cards and you would record the results. Some people take photographs, actually, of how the cards might be uh, laid out on the table, or they might record the results uh, in, in Visio or Excel, uh, or even Word. Those are uh, convenient tools, just to find out how people are organizing the content uh, on the site. And once, uh, they, they would also basically um, assign a group label you know, to the overall parent category. So you can see, at, at the conclusion of this exercise, the similarities uh, that, that people will uh, exhibit in organizing the site, and you'll also see the differences. You'll also likely find some cases where there are orphan cards, where people just don't know where to put uh, a couple of the index cards, a couple of the pieces of content on your existing site. It just doesn't seem to be a natural fit with anything there. And the critical step to take at, at that juncture is to say, well, is, this, is that content or is that area really necessary? You know, if there's not a natural fit uh, in the existing uh, structure, um, may, maybe there's a reason that that card is orphaned and, and that uh, piece of content can be discarded. So at the conclusion of uh, receiving the results from, from your group of volunteers, uh, you can study the similarities and the differences, draw the necessary conclusions so that you can uh, devise a healthier and, and more intuitive uh, information architecture for your, your website. And again, information architecture, you know, I think in the common uh, vernacular basically means site navigation, but it's a little bit deeper than that in that it also refers to the labels that you would see uh, on a web page. And throughout the, um, as we get a little deeper into the presentation, I'll be pulling up some uh, sample sites that, that we've done, and I'll, I'll highlight you know, what I'm referring to by, by good IA and, and, and label. A natural segue for an information architecture is uh, net the site navigation. And just a few tips here on devising your site navigation. Um, I'm intending a little pun there with the uh, keep it simple and not flashy. Uh, of course, that was um, you know, a pretty popular trend a while ago. I think that trend is, uh, not that there's anything wrong with Flash at all, but I, I think if you don't need some uh, big slideshow going on on the top of your website, people do want things to be simple. They want it to be intuitive, quick, and fast. And uh, Flash, I think, is great.